Hello and welcome to an SEK girls basketball matchup between the four and eight Chanute Blue Comets and the five and eight Iola Mustangs. This is game one of two for tonight's homecoming special here at CHS. We have an, an exciting game ahead of us. This stream is brought to you by our Comet Vision crew here at CHS. I'm your host Bryson Ginswider here with Braylon Rita and we are just about ready for tip off. Here we got some starters for you. For Chanute we have senior number 20 Ashley Havland Senior number 11, Kelsey Havlin, they are twins. Senior number four, Peyton Shields. Senior number 14, Kinley Chard. And freshman number five, Sarah Unir. How do you, how do you feel about this freshman being in this lineup, in the starting lineup right now, Bryson? She's been, she's really been great all year. And she's really and she it. has, she I has mean, deserved it. And here we have, really earned it. here we have the starters for Iola. Junior, number three, Kendall Bycroft. Senior, number five, Jackie Fager. Junior, number 12, Alana Matter. Junior, number 10, Elza Clift. And junior, number 21, Reese Curry. We do have an exciting matchup tonight between Chanute and Iola. What do you expect to see in this game, Braylon? Um, I'm really, I'm, I mean, I, I want to, I want to expect a good game. I hope the girl, both both teams, play a good game tonight. Especially with Sarah Unir, the freshman starting, she's really deserved the spot. She showed in previous games that she might she might be a freshman. She might be new to this team, but she can really come out and play. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm seeing with this starting lineup here is a lot of shooters on the court at once. I mean, both of the Havlin twins, absolute buckets from three point range. Of course, Sarah Unir is as well. Peyton Shields can knock one down, and even Kinley Chard can knock one down from time to time. So it, it makes you think that they're just gonna, they're about to come out in this first quarter and shoot. I believe they will just let it fly in this first quarter. What we've seen from the what we've seen from Chanute is their defense. What do you think their defense, like keys for the defense tonight, will be against this Iowa team? I think just. Number one thing in basketball is keep them away from the basket. Don't let them get easy buckets at the rim. And if you're going to foul, don't let them make it. Game is almost ready to go. We have Coach Fox saying his last, hy hyping up the girls for last time before this game starts. And Chanute is ready for tip off. You see, Iola. Looks to be a pretty tall team here. Really coming out with the hype. Mm -hmm. Here comes tip off. And Iola wins the tip off. Moving the ball into the corner. Just looking to find a pass somewhere, but can't. Moves it back out. Chanute is in a zone trap style of defense. Trying to get turnovers early, which is something they do. Great. They get they have very active hands and are very able to get the ball just like that. Knock it away. And that is Kinley Chard goes up for the fast break layup, misses off the glass. That is Els Going Elza with Clift with the rebound. Going way too quick. It was a great play. Like you said with the defense, we've seen a lot of steals from the Chanute defense. Uh-huh. And there is a turnover by Chanute right after the turnover by Iola. Very quick, this game has started off very quick. Chanute's try to move the ball too quick. Like I've said in previous games, I mean, basketball is really a slow paced game. I mean, you wanna, especially with no shot clock, you shouldn't try to be forcing mm -hmm. passes and just stuff that's unwanted. Well, I would say it's a comfortable pace game as Alana Mater gets the bucket, gets was, our first points of the game. That was some great ball movement made by Iola. Found the girl in the paint. Layup. See, that's something you don't want to allow too often. Getting easy buckets at the rim and turnovers are not great ways to start out a game. This is this does not look like our Chanute girls team. A lot of game left. We can we can we can get it back. Iola Mustangs with a two-point lead and the ball. Almost turns the ball over again. No jump ball called, no foul called. And there is a foul on Kinley Chard. That is her first. first 
That is number 10 with the ball. Elsley Clift looking to move it around, gets it back to Kendall, and the ball's stolen again. Kinley Chard moving it up the court and gets an easy layup right there. It was a great read by Sarah Unir right there, poking the ball free right mm -hmm. to Kinley, and then Kinley taking it up with the layup. Yep, very, very active on defense, Kinley Chard has been. Great backdoor cut there. Misses the layup and it goes out of bounds. It's going to stay Iola Ball on the baseline. Looking to get. Really, that was a really good look from the point guard mm -hmm. right there. Shot is up and it is missed. You near moving the ball up. Gets right around her man. And, they and that is a clean block there by Reese. Reese Curry, I believe. She gets the ball at the top of the paint. Throws a whipped overhand pass down into the paint. Now she's gonna move the offense and I think, I believe it's an illeg illegal screen possibly called there. That is another turnover for Iola. As we see on this replay. Nope, no replay I guess. The uh, Iola has started to press a little bit. Oh, risky pass there, almost stolen. Peyton Shields has it at the top of the key. Finds Ashley Havland, I believe. Kelsey Havland there with the three. Like you said earlier, the Havland twins are known from their shooting behind the arc. Mm -hmm. As you see, Kelsey showing it right there, coming out hot in this first quarter. And the ball is poked away by both of them right there. Peyton gets away from two players somehow and a great pass up to Kinley Chard who gets a bucket. And Iola is going to take a timeout. And that's a 30 second timeout. We're just gonna stay here with you. We have some high action basketball coming. What, Barry, have, what have you thought about this first quarter? First quarter, the Chanu offense, as you see at the very beginning of the first quarter, they've been throwing some risky passes. As you can see, there's been a lot of turnovers from those passes. Been a lot of turnovers both. The Chanu defense really showing. As you see in the replay, Peyton Shields stealing the ball, finding, finding Kinley Chard, and she just goes up with the easy bucket. Great pass there from Peyton Shields. And it looks like we are having Kearney and Anna Kate Noonan are both checking in here. Kearney Fulmer and Anna Kate Noonan. What they do a lot with Fulmer is they put her up, as you see, all the way up at half court. She meets the point guard at half court and traps, and it's hard to throw a pass over her lengthy body. They got it. That was a great play there from Brycroft. Another steal by a Havland. We've seen a lot. And I've said this, I've said this before. We've seen a lot from this Chanute defense. This Chanute defense is known from poking the ball free, fast breaks. Kelsey steals. misses the three, but the rebound is by, grabbed by Unir. Pump fake by Anna Kate. She drives to the basket, goes up left-handed, gets the foul, and is going to the line. Great drive there. The pump fake in the drive got her <clears throat> got her wide open for the layup, and she they had to foul her or she was gonna get those easy two points. It was, a, it was a great read by Anna Kate, finding that lane in the paint. That's Fager's second foul already in this first quarter. Anna Kate misses the first free throw. And Fager is checking out for number 24, Kyson Croonsberry. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, it's quite the name. Anna Kate puts up the second free throw, misses that one as well. That is Mater with the rebound. Oh, and there is a travel called on Elza Clift. She just kind of got the ball poked away from her and then. This is a great defense by Kearney Fulmer. Mm -hmm. I'm li I like this defense for, that Fox has set up where the Kearney meets her at half court, really putting the pressure on the point guard, mm -hmm. especially with Kearney's length and height, her wingspan's a lot a lot longer, and so she's just gonna poke these balls. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. it's gonna be easy for her. And that is number 24 for Chanute. And Kearney hits a three. 
Don't see her shoot threes very often, but knocks that one down. Uh, at that last little break, we had Shakira Walls and Avery Hicks check into the game. And is that was that another steal right there? Another steal. The Chanute defense did not come to play tonight. They mean all business. And Kearney hits another three-pointer. You really don't see Kearney shooting a lot. I mean, but she's she showing is up that she to can, six she can shoot. points, and she is meeting, getting active hands, not letting. Uh, I believe that was Bycroft really be able to move with the ball. Pass down to Mater. She finds, and the ball is stolen again. Tierney shoots another one. That one is off. That, that was, was a great. That was a little was a heat check right there. Avery, that was a great read by Hicks right there. Mm -hmm. Seeing, seeing where the guard was gonna throw, she read the guard by looking at the eyes, picked the ball off, then tossed it up court. Mm -hmm. Bycroft bringing the ball up. Ball is passed down into the paint. Shot is up and it is good by number 21, Reese Curry there, showing off her jumper. And the press is now on by Iola. And a beautiful press break. Get the ball into Shakira. It looks like she was possibly fouled there, but no foul is called. Great she makes the bucket. Movement. Great ball movement by Chanute right there, finding the open girl, and she just drives right into the paint, free mm -hmm. lane. Ball is passed into the paint, and a foul there is called. That will send Ma Maha Mahala Burris to the line to shoot two here, I believe. That foul is called on Avery Hicks. You know, in the NBA, oftentimes players that are wearing a mask end up having elite performances. We'll see if we'll see if uh, Burris can keep that trend alive here. As she knocks down the first one and knocks down the second one, An another press is on here. Comets, a lot of passes to break the press. It's what you want to do. If you dribble too much in a press, you're just going to get trapped and turn the ball over. Ball is in the corner to Anna Kate. She finds Fulmer down in the paint, and she saves it and throws a beautiful pass down to Shakira, but it just goes all around the rim and out. That was, that was a great save by Kearney right there, going straight to Shakira. Mm-hmm. Ball that was, bounced around the rim, fell off. That was one of those plays where you like to say it's talent, but a lot of that's luck right there. And there is another foul. Burris heading back to the line. She hit her last two free throws on the last possession. Looking if she can push it to four for four here. 15 to six game here, late in the first quarter. But Iola has really started to get their offense going, putting points on the board. As that free throw is missed there. We have, looks like we're going back to our original starting lineup here. Both the Havlin twins, Sarah Unier, Peyton Shields, and Kinley Chard are in the game. And she misses both free throws this time. Great box out there by Kinley Chard. No press here, able to move the ball up with ease. Peyton Shields setting up the offense. Fakes the handoff, passes it out. Havlin to Havlin there. Great, great play, great footwork to get down there and great get that pass. layup. Great, great pass, I mean, it was great pass, great drive, great layup. It was just overall a great play. And another turnover. Havlin has the ball, does a spin move, passes it out to her sister, and then they just reset the offense to Peyton Shields. 
35 seconds on the clock, possibly just gonna look for the last shot or take one if it's there. Backdoor cut, doesn't, doesn't get the ball to her. Ball is up and it looked like it was good, but it just hit the net. And now ball hits the baseline and it is now Iola ball there. Chanute starting off real hot this co this first quarter. Do you think that will affect them towards the end? I mean, they're just using all the energy. Do you think that will affect them towards the end of this game? No, I think that this momentum will just keep building and they'll be able to rely on that momentum to keep them pushing all the way through this game. As the ball is stolen there, but a travel is called on Ashley Havland. That could have been a travel, but it was not called. Jumper at the line to end it, but she misses, and we are we are going to the end of this quarter. We're gonna take a break along with you. We'll see you back for the second quarter action. KFEX 93.1 FM and Comet Vision are excited to partner with Dr. Grant Gastineau. Dr. Gastineau graduated from Chanute High School and is committed to supporting the activities of the youth of Chanute. Thank you, Dr. Gastineau. We appreciate your support. Cardinal Drug Store, located at 103 East Main in downtown Chanute, is a small town pharmacy and gift store which includes an old-fashioned soda fountain. They specialize in compounds and vaccines. They also supply many types of medical items. Cardinal Drug Store is your one-stop shop for all of your health care needs. KFEX and Comet Vision are so grateful for your support. second quarter action we see Fox giving his final preparations to the team before we start this second quarter as, and as, as you can see we've been raining threes this whole game Kearney hit two big threes a lot going on here what do you think Kearney, you, Kearney former not being the shooter knocks down two three points really showing we haven't seen shots from Kearney at all we've seen her in the paint getting rebounds mm -hmm. putting up putting up missed shots that is we often really don't we we really don't see her behind the three-point, but she's showing that I might not be here all the mm -hmm. time, but I can still shoot the ball. As Kelsey Havlin shoots the three, misses. And the ball is in Iola's hands, are rolling down the court. Still in a zone, zone defense here. It gets the ball into the middle. She misses the layup right at the basket and Chanute gets the rebound. That's something they've been doing with a lot of success is getting the ball down into Burris. And she has been getting to the line quite often right, with it. And there is a foul. That is going to send Kelsey Havland Kelsey to the line. She misses the first free throw. Great move to get into the paint, gets fouled, layup, just missed it. She shoots second free throw and knocks it down. That's gonna put her point total to six already here. And one thing about that first half was Iola had 11 turnovers to Chanute's three. Something big to watch out for. And there's a three pointer shot and knocked down by, I believe, oh, that was by Kendall Bycroft knocking down the three-pointer. So when you were talking about the turnovers, as you can tell, I mean, it's really affect this Iola offense. Mm -hmm. Scores 18-19, it was 17-4 going into, going into the second quarter. It's just the turnovers, you don't, it's, yeah. <laughs> you just don't want Havland to. to Havland connection for the three. It is good. Chanute knocks down another three-pointer. That's Ashley's first three points of the game. Oh, Sarah goes for the steal, doesn't get it. There is Burris again, turnaround jump shot, just like Elijah Wan knocks it down. 
Iola's offense, they're really looking down in the paint for her. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, from these pastimes that they try to look for her, Chanute's just been all over it. Mm -hmm. And that's Kelsey Havlin going back to the line. One thing I would guess I see Fox end up doing later on in this game is getting Tierney down in the paint, have a big body down there to stop Burris from just doing whatever she wants. She knocks down the first free throw. And Anna Kate and Kearney both check in. She misses the second free throw, but a rebound by her sister. Takes out to the corner, fakes the three. It's kind of trapped in the corner, needs to get the ball out. Finds her sister, Kelsey, for the three, misses. Kearney gets the rebound, but throws it over Anna Kate's head, and that is a turnover. It is going in Iola's direction. That was a, that was a great offensive drive there by Chanute. Mm -hmm. without counting the turnover right there. Great rebound by Kearney. She was looking for Anna Kate, just threw it right over her. Mm -hmm. And see what they did with that offense right there. There's a foul called, I think, I believe a hook on number 12, Alana Mater, her first personal foul. That's another turnover. That's 12 turnovers in this game. Not something you like to see. When you have more turnovers than points, that's that's quite rough. They easily break the press, get a layup, but it is missed. Peyton getting active on the boards, trying to get down there, get the ball. She does not. Chanute is showing right now that this press really isn't affecting us. They've broke this press on every single time. Yeah, with ease. And there's another steal. Gets the ball in to Fulmer. She misses, gets her own rebound, and gets it back up and knocks it down. Great, she has great eight look. points. Great look from Peyton right there, finding Kearney in the paint. Kearney going up, missing, grabbing her own rebound and putting it back up. You love mm -hmm. to see that. It, that ball is down, and it is a jump ball, and that is, I believe that should be Chanute ball. No. I guess not, it's a uh, Iola ball. But they, oh, she threw it off of her. That could have been Chanute's ball, but I think they're keeping it with Iola again. See, active hands, something they do all the time on Chanute's defense. Known for, Chanute's known for this defense. As you can tell, they have 12 turn, uh, Iola has 12 turnos, turnovers right now from mm -hmm. Chanute just poking the ball free, stealing the ball. The ball pass into the paint and she just loses it off her own knee. But I, I apparently Kearney got a hand in there and it is poked it free and another baseline pass coming. Iola with the ball at the top of key, makes a move, shoots a floater, misses it, gets her own board. Great hustle there. Triple team able to get it out. But Anna Kate is all over that, and so is Kelsey Halflin, but somehow. Iola stayed with it, and a foul is called there. Way to not turn the ball over there by, I by Iola. That is Anna Kate's second foul on the night. Almost gets the, pokes the ball away there. And see, they have Kearney down in the paint, making sure that Burris goes nowhere. And that ball is poked free again, and it is gonna stay with Iola will pass the ball in from the baseline. See, on the baseline, you're looking to get a shot in the paint, just like that. Got it to Burris, and she gets fouled, heading to the line. There's not much you can do with someone that's, th that's that tall. You almost have to foul. She is headed to the line, and that's Anna Kate's third foul there. Burris knocks down the first free throw. That's her fifth point of the night. Looking to make it six here. Free throws up and she misses. Ball is poked and Kearney just didn't grab it there. I don't know. And 13 was able to just sneak in behind and steal it from her really. Little fadeaway jump shot. 
brilliant shot there by Reese Curry, knocking it down, living up to that last name. Clean play right there, going right off the shoulder, right there off the free mm -hmm. throw. Great Just press break, easy bucket. absolutely beautiful. And then a foul is called, sending Ashley Halflin to the line. That pass from Kearney, overhead pass from the middle of the court right into Ashley's bread basket. And she's headed to the line to shoot two free throws here. Knocks down the first. Either Havlin twin is people, they, them both, you do not want them at the mm, free throw. They are I mean, both very easy efficient. Buckets, easy, easy buckets every time. She knocks down the first but misses the second. But Kearney is able to get the rebound, misses the layup, and Burris with the rebound. Iola moving the ball up the court. Looking to find someone in the paint, finds Burris, and she just gets another easy layup. I mean, she's, compared to the girls on Chanute, she's like Manute Bowl. She's like she's, like Victor Wimbanyama. She's, she's really putting that height. She's really using that height right there. And that last play you see her, she shoots it over. Mm -hmm. Over the Chanute player, and just makes the easy bucket. She's up to seven points now, Burris is. And now they have her playing at the top, just like how Chanute has had Kearney playing at the top. Kearney throws a great overhead pass down into Avery Hicks, but she just misses it. And loose ball, everyone's diving for it. Great pass by Kearney again. Three is up and missed, and the ball is poked off of Burris's hands, and that's gonna stay with Chanute at the baseline. That was, a, that was a great look by Kearney, finding Hicks in the paint. She went up with the, she went up with the layup, Missed the layup, ball got poked. Great hustle by both teams, diving on the floor, going to get the ball. Chanute come up with it. Peyton Shields in the short corner. Bounds. Misses. And now, Iola is off to the races. Looking to find, I mean, you know they're looking to find Burris. You just gotta stop the ball from getting there. They get it to Chikara's her. She's just able to she put it up, nothing but net. She Chikara's has been. playing really aggressive defense right there, making sure that she was not getting mm -hmm. the ball. But, I mean, she, what, what are you supposed to do when somebody's that tall? Mm -hmm. She's really, she, she's just an overall great player. Shot is up and toilet bowls around and is out. Now, I think that Fox needs to get Fulmer down in there. It's hard for anyone else but her to guard Burris. A great step through. That is a bucket from Reese Curry. And Chanute is going to take a timeout. And we are going to take a timeout with you. We'll be back when the ball game is played. From kickoff to the final lap, from peewees to the weekend pros, our team of doctors can help with the diagnosis and treatment of sports-related injuries. Wherever you are in your sports journey, Labette Health Sports Medicine team has the training, experience, and skill to repair, restore, and renew. For more information about Southeast Kansas' leading orthopedic and sports medicine program, go to labettehealth.com. Hello and welcome back. There is two minutes left in this second quarter, in this first half, and Chanute has the ball, bringing it up the court. They also have a five-point lead. Earlier in the game, this was a double-digit lead for Chanute, but they, but through Burris, Iola has narrowed it down. The shot goes up and misses, but the rebound goes to Chanute, and we miss on the second chance opportunity as well. In this second quarter, we've really seen Iola starting to put the gas on both offense and defense. Yeah, they they've have. Really clamped, they've really clamped down the Chanute As offense. As the ball is stolen away, and a great play there by Peyton Shields to find Fulmer. Sorry for they've interrupting. Really, what were you saying there? They've really clamped down this Chanute offense, not letting them get easy buckets. And then they're just finding Burris in the paint every time. Burris is just getting these easy buckets every single time. I mean, it's hard to stop someone that's that much taller than you and has that much more of a reach advantage. She isn't just tall, she has long arms and is able to hit the jump shot kind of like with an over the head shot. 
crazy pass there. It's poked away by Shakira. She has a layup against no one and knocks it down. That is her fourth point of the game. That was a great steal and a great way to finish the steal. Jump ball there. And that is a that is gonna be Chanu Ball. Another turnover there. That's up to 15 turnovers for Iola. I mean, and they're still within nine. They've been able to put it together, but. They've really brought brought it together in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. They cut the lead. Chanute's only leading by nine now. In the first quarter, we saw a double digits lead right mm -hmm. now. As now there is 40 seconds left, and Chanute is perfectly fine with holding for this last shot. They're moving the ball around. They don't want to turn the ball over though. It's the last thing you want. Find Shakira. They're just they're just throwing the ball around, playing hot potato with it. Shakira gets it and shoots, and she is fouled, and she will shoot three free throws here. Not something you see often, but a foul from the three-point line. She is gonna shoot three. So here's a little some points for tonight. Fulmer has ten. Shakira Walls has four. Kelsey has seven. Uh, Kinley Chard has four, and Ashley has four. And then for the other side, you have Kendall Bycroft, who has three points tonight. As Shakira knocks down the first one. You have Burris, who has... Let me look at my tallies. 11 points tonight, or 10 points tonight. Shakira did not knock down the other free throws. Shakira gets another steal. She's pushing the ball up the court. Goes up and gets fouled hard. She's headed back to the line. But for the rest of those, we have Alana Mater, who has two points, and Reese Curry, who has six. Shakira's really making the big plays right now. This is the second time in the last minute that we've seen her at the free throw. Mm -hmm. 7.3 seconds remaining in this half. She knocks down both the free throws. That one touched every part of the rim and went in. They move the ball up quickly. They find Burris. She shoots the mid-range jumper, does not knock it down. Chanute will take a 12 point lead heading in to halftime. We're gonna take a break with you here. We'll be back. Madison Shop Pharmacy, located right across the street from Royster Middle School in downtown Chanute, is in the business of making you feel better, faster. With three licensed pharmacists, the Medicine Shop has the knowledge to know the right drugs and the proper dosage to ensure your safety. If you're not quite up to your game, Medicine Shop offers delivery to your door. The Medicine Shop, a proud underwriter of the Chinook Blue Commons. Unbelievable. Sparklight is unveiling unlimited internet for just $25 a month. Get reliable 100 meg internet for just $25 a month for 12 months with unlimited data. That's unlimited internet. Call 877-469-3057 or visit sparklight.com slash savings. Sparklight, a new breed in high speed.
Hello and welcome back to our homecoming special here at Chanute High School. They're, I'm excited for the second half. It is a 12 point game in Chanute's favor, but the, the lead got all the way down to seven la in the last uh, quarter. Because, and that's, that's all been on the back of Mahala Burris. She has had 10 points in this game and she has been a force to be reckoned with down in the paint and she is currently not in the game. They're looking to run a different offense. They get it down and the layup is missed. They're pushing the pace up the floor. The ball is passed to Kearney. She does a spin move, shoots. It is good, it is not good, sorry. Braylon, what have you been thinking about this game? It's been a real big, def I would like to say it's been a real big defensive side of the game. Chanu with over 15 turnovers went and with Iola, as, as we have a steal going on right now, with Iola cutting the lead, the lead was double digits in the first quarter. They came back, made the lead, Chanu was only leading by five, and then Chanu up the lead to 12 coming into this third quarter. Mm -hmm. Now they're motioning around. Ball is to Kearney in the corner. She passes out to Ashley Havland. Finds Peyton Shields. They're just looking to find the right shot. Nice little crossover. Gets it into the corner. Does not take the shot. Little scoop layup. It is almost good. But Ashley is going to the free throw line. Great Smith spin move by Ashley right there. Scoop layup. Mm -hmm. Took it right to the line. Indeed. Now, in that first half, the ball was turned over 16 times by Iola. If they want to win this game, that needs to they needs to be less than five this whole first half or this whole, whole second half, and they need to keep feeding the ball into Burris, who is on the bench getting a break right now. I mean, she's been she's carrying really, off. She, yeah, she's she's really a big player for this Iola and team. Chanute gets the rebound. Both the free throws are missed, but gets the rebound and is resetting the offense. Spin move by Kelsey Havlin. Shoots a mid-range pull-up, and it is good. That was great Kelsey move. Havlin. Great, great move right there by Kelsey. Spin move. Threw up the shot. Drained. And Fager misses with the re She gets her own rebound. And the ball is kicked by Kinley, and it is going to stay with Iola. I'm honestly surprised that Burris is not in the game just because how impactful she was on offense. But uh, everyone needs a break. Kearney pokes the ball away, but then she steps on the line. And it is back with Iola. Fourteen point lead here for Chanute. What do you think are some big keys for this Iola team to come back, tie the game, and possibly win this game? Well, I think one thing that needs to happen is turnovers need to be abolished. There needs to be no turnovers, zero. And if they can, and I mean they've sh they've shown that they can't because there's another turnover. You can't have this many turnovers and win a basketball game for one. And also, they need someone else to step up. It is very hard for one player to win you a game, and that's what they've been relying on with Burris so far. From from what we've seen in this first this first half, we've seen the Iola offense. Right when they get the pass, the first thing that they do is look down in the paint for Burris. Shanuna has really started to pick that up, and in the second quarter, they've started triple teaming her in the paint, and. They're really starting to crack down on her not getting the ball. It's really showing on this Iola offense. And there is a jump ball, but it is going to stay with Chanute. Yeah, you need to. You, we need to see someone else step up. I mean, Reese Curry has had a good game. She has six points, but no, no one else really has been stepping up for that. For the Mustangs, they need that. Kearney with the ball high. I mean, that's the first dribble of the possession right there. 
Kelsey Havlin shoots the three, misses. Now it's back in Iola's hands. Oh, she falls and the ball ends up going out of bounds. There is another turnover. That's up to 20 turnovers in this game. Rough, rough night it's been for Iola. And they're still pressing, but really this press is a very weak press. There's not really a lot of pressure on the press, which, I mean, doesn't make much sense. Beautiful Euro step by Kelsey Havland. Goodness me, that was amazing. Great Euro step. She found that open lane. Great vision right there. She knew exactly what she was going to do. Great layup, made the shot. Looks like she's been studying some Manu Ginobili in her free time. Beautiful Euro step there. Sarah Yubnir is checking into the game for, for Ashley Havland. That Kelsey now has 11 points this game. Now the game high score. Burris, Burris is now back into the game. Burris has checked in for Iola. There's Sarah Yunir bringing it up. Peyton hustles to the basket and gets her first points of the game. Nice little layup there, tough bucket. Very tough bucket. Oh, and there is once again, oh, that's not a turnover. They're saying that was poked out, but I believe it was poked out, but then I think it hit off of Fager again, but they called it Iola Ball still. Iola on the baseline, how many times have we seen this today's game? And there's Burris, she steps on the line there. Now it is Chanute's ball once again. See, the thing with this press is, the main thing, a, pr a press is short for pressure. You need pressure on the press, but they don't have very much pressure at all. Chanute very, has just been breaking uh -huh. and breaking this press. Very easy to break. Offensive rebound by Kelsey, but it just gets blocked right back into her face by Reese Curry. Kinley Chard makes a move but misses the layup there. 18 point game and the ball is stolen by Peyton Shields and she got fouled at least twice on that, but they call the foul there. And Schnew will have it on the sideline. We have Anna Kate checking in for Kinley Chard. What do you, what are you thinking Schnute really does in the second half, Braylon? Waste of time down. They have a mm -hmm. they have an 18 point lead right now. There's no need to be taking risky shots, throwing up, doing risky passes. You have an 18 lead. Three minutes left in this third quarter right now. Really, you just want to waste this time. You do not want to give Viola any time to come back. I agree 100% with you. And they just leave Burris wide open out of everybody on the court. That's the last person you want to leave wide open. She now has 12. Ball is poked out of bounds, out of Unir's hands. Unir passing it in on the sideline. She threw it off the defender's leg. Oh. She was, she was getting trapped right there, didn't want to get the jump ball or turn it, make it a turnover oh. and threw it right there off the defender's leg. There is a foul called right before she just chucked that out of bounds. I don't think Kearney was expecting that pass, but the foul saved the possession for Chanute. Yeah, especially in Kansas, no shot clock. Waste as much time you, as you need. You just want to waste this time. Find the perfect shot every possession. And that is a perfect shot right there. Kearney knocks one. it down, is going to the line for one more. Kearney tonight has really showed that she can step up and be a shooter. Mm -hmm. That was a... Go ahead. Tonight is a... Tonight is not the night that you want her on the free throw right now. Mm -hmm. That was a beautifully drawn up play by Coach Fox there on the baseline to get the ball in the Kearney right in front of the basket. And she knocks down the free throw. 
great game she's had, 13 points for Fulmer. Chanute just playing the smothering defense that they always do. Ball, they're trying to deny Burris the ball. Every time the ball's thrown to her, there's someone trying to bat that thing away, not let her catch. And tr uh, Kendall is trapped there in the corner. And Iola calls a timeout. And we are going to take a timeout with you. We'll be back uh, for the rest of this third quarter. Home Savings Bank is a platinum underwriter here at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Home Savings Bank has been serving the Chanute area since 1886. Customer owned and customer driven, Home Savings Bank, located at 214 North Lincoln Avenue in Chanute, Kansas, is here to serve all your banking needs. Whether your needs are checking, savings account, safety deposit box, lending, or online banking, Home Savings Bank is here to help. Home Savings Bank is located on the internet at homesavingschanute.com. Home Savings Bank is committed to the youth of Southeast Kansas and helping the ministries at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Missing that human touch at your bank? At Community National Bank and Trust, you'll be able to talk with a real person. Community National Bank is small enough to know you, yet big enough to offer the best products. Your busy lifestyle requires banking options like mobile deposit and people-to-people -people pay. With locations in Southeast Kansas and Southwest Missouri, Community National Bank and Trust can help keep your finances safe and your spending smarter. Online at mybankcnb.com. Community National Bank and Trust. Federally insured. Locally awesome. Member FDIC. Hello and welcome back to this third quarter matchup between the Iola Mustangs and the Schnoot Blue Comets. Iola had to call a timeout there because Ken Kendall Bycroft was trapped over there in the corner, just didn't want her to turn the ball over. So now they're just resetting their own, their own offense here. Find number 13 in the corner. She shoots it, misses, ball goes right to Anna Kate. Now she's moving the ball up the court. Shakira was running up the court pretty fast. Anna Kate could not find her though. Now she knew is just fine with moving this ball around, keeping it safe. Don't want to turn the ball over here. Sarah, beautiful backdoor pass is missed though by Kelsey and she dives for it, does not get it. It is Iola ball. Now Great Iola. Look right there by you near. Mm -hmm, yep, beautiful found, pass. Found, found Havlin cutting in right there. Mm -hmm. But she, she was too quick, found herself right under the basket. Iola has a whole new unit checking in. I believe four different players just subbed in. And number 11, Burris, the backpacker of this game, has, is now on the bench. Ball's almost stolen a couple times there. Now they, ju they just look like they're so sped up, don't know what to do. They turn the ball, they do not turn the ball over. That's gonna stay with Iola. I guess it was poked by a defender. Can't find anyone, gets the ball in to Curry. She passes it in. Great defense there and that's another steal. Anna Kate with the ball in her hands looking to force the issue, but Kelsey's gonna force the issue. Misses the layup though. And back in the hands of Iola. See, like, Chanute. go ahead. Chanute really giving up the ball in these past couple of plays right here. Mm -hmm. This could end up with Iola if they make the right moves. It could end up with Iola coming back. They could make a run for, they could make a run for the win here, but not if they keep turning the ball over, that's all I'm gonna say. We have, that was Anna Kate's fourth foul. She checked out. Kinley Chard checked back in. And I believe Avery Hicks also checked back in. Ball is poked free by Sarah Unir. 19 point game here, Chanute is in the lead looking to just relax and let this game end with them in front, of course. Another steal. Kinley pushing the ball up very fast. Find Shakira up. Little too quick of that pass. Ball is stolen. 
Curry at the top of the key. Throws a great pass down to the paint, and number 10 shoots the three-pointer, knocks it down. That is Elza Clift. That is a, actually a two-pointer. Her foot was on the line. 15 seconds here. Chanute's going to hold for the last shot. And they have number 12. That is Alana Mater guarding up top. Three seconds left. Gets it to Kinley Charge. She puts it high off the glass. Misses. This is the end of the third quarter. We're going to take a break with you. We'll come back for this fourth quarter action. KFEX Fire Escape Radio programming is made possible in part by the underwriting efforts of Sonic Drive-In of Chanute. Sonic Drive-In of Chanute does not consider community involvement a sales gimmick or a public relations ploy. They see it as a way to be a good neighbor and as a way to have a positive impact on their community. It is for these reasons that Sonic Drive-In of Chanute is a proud underwriter of KFEX Fire Escape Radio and the ministry efforts of the entire Fire Escape ministry to the youth of Chanute. Welcome back for this fourth quarter of our Chanute homecoming special. Eight minutes left in this game. 17 point lead for Chanute. Braylon, how do you think Iola can get themselves back into this game and get themselves another number in the win column? Cut the, I mean, you can't turn over the ball this quarter. Their turnovers, as you've seen in this game, Bryson, their turnovers have really affected them. 20, over 20 turnovers, and half of those were in the first, uh, not even half, three-fourths of those turnovers were in the first quarter when Chanute had their huge run on them. Mm -hmm. It's just, they can't, they can't be turning over this ball. They are now up to 24 turnovers on the game. Iola has the ball, and I think they need, it seems Burris has not gotten involved very much in the second half. I don't know if she's battling an injury or what. The shot is missed, and Kenley Chard comes down with the rebound. Quarterback pass to Mendigo to Fulmer, but ended up going perfectly to Ashley Havlin. Ball is on the ground. Jump ball, it's going to stay with Chanute. Ashley appears to be a little bit hurt there, but she's just walking it off. And Peyton Shields is going to pass it in from the baseline. Now, if you're Chanute, there's no need to shoot a three-pointer very early in a possession, as I say that. Havlin shoots it and misses. But there's no need to take any shot very early in a possession. I mean, with that shot, that's a wide-open three-pointer. That's acceptable. But no stupid shots is really what's going on. And there's a, another turnover. That puts it up to 25 on the game. It's been like a rough I night. Said, like I said from this Iola team, uh, this would be a really close game. But with Chanute mm -hmm. stealing the ball and playing amazing defense, and then with them just throwing the ball, throwing some wacky passes right out of bounds, it's really affecting their offense to the point where they can't really score as much. Mm-hmm. Now, I believe that if, so Chanute has six turnovers right now. If Iola were to match that, and, and if they only had six turnovers, the ball, the ball game would be very close. I believe it would be within 10, possibly even within, within five points here. There's a foul called on Chanute. But, I mean, as the saying always goes, defense wins championships. If you can force turnovers, you'll win, and Chanute is Showing that. Yeah, they have they've shown that all night. A great move by Kelsey Havlin. Or no, by Ashley Havlin there, I apologize. But the ball gets poked away and then the ball is poked away from behind by Kinley Chard. Great hustle right there. We've been talking about Iola turning over the ball, but Chanute's really starting to turn it over right now. Mm-hmm. They have around 10 turnovers on the game. And that's another turnover for Iola. I mean, when you have more turnovers than points, there's no chance you're gonna win a basketball game. They can't crack down the Chanute defense. They have 26 turnovers and 24 points tonight. 
That is not a stat line you like to see ever. And Shishanu's just perfectly fine with moving the ball around till they can find the shot that they believe is best fit for their possession and for their lead. Fulmer tries to make a play, can't, gets the ball passed out. Then three seconds, or no, a timeout is called. And we're also gonna take a timeout with you. We'll be back for some more fourth quarter action. Game's almost done, don't go away, we'll be back. Gilmore and Phillips PA has been providing quality financial guidance to local individuals and businesses. Their expertise ranges from basic tax management and accounting services to more in-depth services such as audits, financial statements, QuickBooks support, and payroll. Jared Gilmore and Phillips PA has backed Chanute's youth in all their endeavors from the classroom to extracurricular activities. They're proud to help support the youth of Chanute by underwriting this KFEX broadcast. Pet Boarded in Fredonia, Alert Construction Services was founded in Southeast Kansas as a small regional contractor and has now grown into a national heavy industrial construction company with regional offices across the United States. The Alert family is proud of our Southeast Kansas roots because we know that the people of Southeast Kansas make great employees. At Alert, we know that employees are our greatest asset and we're committed to investing in the growth of our employees and our community. Alert Construction Services proud to support the youth of Southeast Kansas through the Firescape Coffee House and KFEX Firescape Radio. Hello and welcome back. Six minutes left in this fourth quarter. Chanute has the ball. Braylon, I want to know who you have been most impressed with tonight. On on Chanute, Kearney Fulmer. Kearney Fulmer, we normally see her in the paint, right? In the paint normally. But this game, she's really shown that she she she's that shooter. Now on Iola, Burris Burris is a big big player for this game, big mm -hmm. player for this game, big player for this Iola team. She's mm -hmm. played phenomenal ball tonight. Her teammates finding her in the paint, and she's just getting these easy buckets. As Zoe Hesse knocks down her first bucket, but yeah, both those players that you mentioned, both are two of the top three scorers in this ball game tonight. Both have played phenomenal. Both have played good on both sides of the ball, if I'm being honest with you. But Burris, just we haven't seen her in the second half very much. She has one point in the second half, 10 in the first. But I'm not really sure. Oh, she's about to actually check back in. The next dead ball. Kinley in the paint backs down. And a travel is called on Kinley Chard. We have Kelsey checking in for her twin, Ashley. And Burris check back in. Curry shoots the mid-range jump shot. That's been her shot all night. She's been able to get her get to her spot very easily. She has eight points tonight. They've cut this down. They've quietly cut this lead down to 13 here. We can see. We'll see what they can do with Burris in now. The Ch Chanute really, really hasn't scored more more towards the end of the third quarter. We didn't really see much scoring coming from mm -hmm. Chanute. Now, sure. now that Burris is in with for Iola, this lead could could change. Mm -hmm. Now, Chanute has only scored nine points in the second half. They had 32 in the first half. Only have scored nine so far here. Looking to get some buckets. I mean, we we know that we've been saying they need to play slow. But now lead is getting getting quite close. They need to have some urgency, get to the buckets, get some buckets, and and that's what that's what Kelsey just did. She's at the free throw line once again. She's she's been living there tonight, Braylon. If Kelsey can knock down these free throw hope these free throws right here, hopefully this can boost the Chanute confidence right here and the playing some a little bit better offense. Really, like you said, nine points in the second half. Really hasn't seen much scoring from the Chanute team. If they keep it up, they could end up losing, losing this lead. Kelsey knocks down both of those free throws, pushes the lead to 15. One thing Chanute has done tonight that I think they've done better than the rest of the entire season is their efficiency at the free throw line. All year they've been pretty good at getting to the free throw line, but to be honest, they've been shooting like Shaq at the free throw line. But tonight they've been knocking them down. 
and scoring points easily that way. I mean, they're called free throws for a reason. They get it into Burris, and she almost makes it. It touches everything but the net there. Kelsey is wide open, knocks it down for three more points. She is up to 16 tonight. Another those player that's been very impressive tonight. Those are the shots that I've been telling you. These free throws, those two free throws, boosting the Chanute confidence, showing that, hey, the, her, she's basically telling, hey, we need to start making these points. We need to start, they're coming back. We need to start playing some good offense. Mm -hmm. We have couple of new players checking in. Kendall Bycroft checking in, and I'm not quite sure who the other player that checked in was. They try to get the ball up to Burris, but she does not catch it. But she chases down and gets, I believe she actually touched that, got a block there. And now Chanute needs to get the ball out, reset as they do. Gets it to Ashley Havlin, she misses this one. Rebound, whoa, elbows kind of thrown there. But Iola has the ball nonetheless. Get, try to get the ball in the burst. See, what they've been doing ever since Burris got hot is they've just been keeping her from catching it, which is, I think, a brilliant game plan. If you're not going to have Kearney guard her the whole time, keeping her from catching it is the second best thing you can do, or maybe possibly even the best thing you can do. Three-pointer is missed. Iola can't get the rebound. A little bit of a stiff arm there from Sarah Unir. Two and a half minutes left. Kearney in the corner. Whole gym wanted her to shoot it, but she didn't. And there is, guess who? Ashley ha or Kelsey Havland going back to the free throw line. Looking to push this lead back up to 20. Been a great game here tonight. Great feeling to get a win right before homecoming. Knocks down the first one. She's she is not a player you want at those free throws. As she's shown, she's not the one the time before this one, she knocked down both free throws and then she knocked down a three point, and now we see her back at the free throw right now. Mm -hmm. See, this game was getting quite close. It was within 13. Now it's back up to 20. Kelsey Havlin has 18 points tonight. Incredible game from her. Curry gets into the paint and gets fouled. She is heading to the line. Reese Curry has quietly had a pretty great game here tonight. Eight points. She's also been good on defense. One of the best defenders on Iola's team. She's tall and quite agile. She knocks down the first one. A great play to go baseline. Goes for the floater, gets fouled. She knocks down both of them. That's 10 points now for Reese Curry. Peyton Shields gets the ball in. Great pass down to Kinley Chard. Ashley Havlin makes a play. She has 20 points tonight, 20. As the lead is pushed to 20 for the Schnoot Blue Comets. Great active hands there, ball stolen. Kearney getting into the paint, slows it down. Throws the ball just right into Burris's hands. I mean, that height really helped her out there. Another turnover for Schnoot. I think we might have spoke too soon, Braylon, I think. Kelsey Havlin has been the most impressive player tonight. As the three-pointer is knocked down by Cruisenberry. I would like to say you are right, Bryson, but at the end of the day, this whole Chanute team mm -hmm. has been playing great. There's, it's hard to pick just one player to show the C who's to say that's playing great when mm -hmm. this whole entire Chanute team, all Bro. teams, we're seeing we're seeing good passes. We're seeing From we're seeing great defense. It's just, I, I, don't, I don't, it's kind of hard to just pick out one person. From top to bottom, the whole team has played great. Schnoot bringing in.
the bench tonight. As it is a 17 point game with a minute left. Letting the JV players get some minutes here. There's the ball almost turned over there, but Chanu keeps fighting for it. Gets it down to Kylie Sanborn, I believe, and she misses the layup. Ball's almost stolen by Sarah Yanir. Iola pushing the ball up. Curry, with a last name like Curry, maybe should have shot that. Gets to her mid-range jumper again and gets fouled on it. She's gonna take two free throws. I think, Braylon, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is, has been the most impressive game we've seen from Chanute all year. Chanute has really played a, just overall, great game. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal game right here. Great defense, yeah, over I'm, 25 28, turnovers here. 28, 28 turnovers. turnovers. It's just wild. We've talked about how good this defense that Chanute has. We've talked about how great it is, but we've never seen it like this. Never seen turnovers mm -hmm. going to double digits for Chanute. And they the, played phenomenal defense and offense. Yeah, the offense has been incredibly efficient, and the free throw line has been the most impressive thing to me because that's been somewhere where Chanute has struggled this year. But tonight, mainly because of Kelsey Havlin, they've really knocked down those free throws. 15 seconds left, Chanute's probably just gonna hold the ball and end this game. Nope, Sarah Unir's gonna launch up a three. Looking to cause a rivalry or something. Seven seconds left. Iola's probably just gonna hold it. Actually, they'll probably take a shot after, after uh, Sarah took a shot. There's Burris, misses. Chanute wins. 50 to 34, brilliant showing, best showing of the season so far for the Chanute Blue Comets. Don't, don't go away for too long. Here shortly we have the boys game of this homecoming special, and we'll see you for that boys game.